Hello there, this is Extra Drill 1201 here commenting over this run of Birthright 0% LTC. This is on the hardest difficulty lunatic with unit and class gross disabled, hence the 0% gross. The objective is essentially to clear Birthright in the lowest amount of turns possible. For this initial clear prologue to Chapter 5, I use HP Boon and Likebane to save a turn in Chapter 1. This run will focus on utilizing unit bases and even promotion gains for certain units, so pre promotes will be highly valued, and so will other certain units, depending on the utility that they provide. Prologue to Chapter 6 is rather simple, so I feel as though it would be best to just pair them up to a single video. Over the course of this run, I will be going over strategies and why they work. I use Moogle Boss's clear of Prologue to Chapter 8 from the from his Birthright 0% LTC. I use some strategies from Cheeky and the Chapter 27 strat for Chest Jump Bull. Uh, just to quickly clarify, there's not really much to talk about with these chapters, so I'll just briefly go over them. For Prologue, I essentially just have Corrin attack the fighter on turn 1, have Takumi attack stance on turn 2, and then have Corrin take the kill. If a clear uses a previously existing strat, I will credit the person at the beginning of the video in the title and have a link to the clear in the description. I use Moogle Boss's strats for Prologue Chapter 8 mainly because there are already good clears and I don't really have anything to differentiate my clear from theirs. I use some strategies from Cheeky, primarily his boss kill in Chapter 12 strats since there's not really much differentiation between my clear and his due to the structure of the maps. I also use Chess Jumple's clear of Chapter 27, since originally I was planning on using Cheeky's clear, but Chess wanted me to use an original clear, and his clear is more reliable, sans the low hexing rod hit. Uh, for Chapter 1, I basically just attack Xander on player phase for free turns. Uh, thanks to the HP boon, I don't need to go to the healing title in order to heal, so that's actually really good, and that saves me a turn, allowing me to complete this in four turns. Um, I want to take this time to briefly go over the units I currently have in this section of the game, as well as the units I will be getting next chapter. Uh, when, strat when strategies come up such as this, I will go into them, but I will also try to go for the units. For chapter 2, it's essentially having Jacob, Corrin, and Gunther climb up the left side, and just attacking the samurai on player phase. Rinka baits Jacob... Ugh. Jacob baits Rinka on enemy phase, which allows him to debuff her, which allows Corrin to take the kill on player phase. Then on the next, then on the subsequent turn, Gunther weakens Kaze. Jacob takes the kill so he can get EXP. And then Jacob, with attack stance from Gunther, takes the remaining two samurai kills. Uh, getting ga Jacob enough EXP is imperative. Since uh, Strat for Chapter 7 basically relies on him getting Elbow Room, Shelter, and Defender rather quickly. So you want I want to give him enough EXP to get those quickly, but not too much. So Phenium EXP is rather imperative in this clear. Um, as for units, Corrin, while not being able to utilize her Great Gross, is still important. Her personal as well as the Boon and Bane I will, be, I will be adjusting in Branch of Fate allows her to perform well as a Parapot. I can also use private quarters to instantly reclass for Yoma into Paladin, which is not only great for higher movement, but also to gain Elbow Room and Defender instantly. Jacob will be incredibly helpful for the first couple of chapters. Reclassing the Paladin allows him to increase his movement and obtain Elbow Room and Defender, which helps with his combat. He stops doing combat around chapter 10, but it's still essential for the beginning maps. Kaze is primarily filler. His low strength base and lowish level means he won't really amount to much. He's helpful in chapter 5. And chapter four a bit, but doesn't really do much besides that after after that, besides filler combat. <laughs> For chapter three, it's mostly just a matter of going down the bridge to the bottom portion of the map. Uh here I have Corn basically position herself alongside Gunther so that way she can one round KO the samurai on player on enemy phase, I mean. Getting Corn as much EXP as possible is also imperative. That way I can get her to level 10 ASAP. So I can basically use her as a promoted pair of bot. Rinka's, as for other units, Rinka is also somewhat useful, acting as a solid pair of bot in certain situations and being the first shove bot I can use. Feeding her to level 10 is also important to obtain, but that it's not that hard to do. And I essentially do over the course of the game. Here, Corrin activates Dragon Dane so that so that way Gunther can essentially go down and attack the archer. Which I forgot to do in this clear. But it doesn't really matter.
it's also important that the samurai moves or that the archer doesn't get attack stance with a samurai. That way, I don't have Gunther die. Uh, I have Corrin kill an archer on player face to get more EXP. And the strat here basically has Jacob pair up with Gunther, so that way he's in range. I don't want to attack the boss because I will get debuffed, and I don't want to attack the archer because I'll kill the archer, and I don't want to get too much EXP. I want to be right... I, have, I want to have enough EXP to get to level 3 on Chapter 7. Here, Corrin kills another enemy and essentially gets some EXP, also weakening the boss. Then on the subsequent turn, Corrin essentially transferred Gunther, so that way Gunther can take the kill. The hit is rather shaky, but Gunther is able to manage it. And then Jacob essentially takes the C's point, ending this map in 5 turns. As for other units, uh, Sakura just heals in Chapter 5 and reclasses in the peg in Chapter 21 to help with the skip. Uh, her personal is actually helpful for Chapter 5, but she doesn't really do much beyond that. Uh, the other unit we get is Azura, who is incredibly useful. Having a dance room near-perfect availability is amazing, and she's instrumental in pretty much every single clear. By far one of the most important units in the game. Uh, here... We essentially have Corrin visit the village for the goddess icon. I'm not actually using the goddess icon. I'm basically just going to sell it for 1,000 gold since it really helps because chapter 7 funds are kind of tight with the amount of stuff I buy. I have Corrin activate the dragon thing here. That way Jacob, I mean Kaze and Rinka can essentially move up and just one around KO the faceless. Uh, Kaze is not going to be able to one around KO the two faceless, but he's able to weaken them. Ryoma is going to be incredibly helpful in this map, which is kind of funny because he's not even a playable unit. He's an ally unit. Hinoka just kind of kills some random faceless, while Sakura just kind of stands there menacingly. Um, so Corrin essentially kills the other faceless on player phase as Ryoma takes out another faceless. The most important thing about this clear is activating the Dragon Vein on the left side of the map. That allows me to essentially dissolve the hill terrain, which has all the faceless in range of corn, but thanks to proper positioning, I only bait the boss and a single other enemy. So here, there's not really much to the map. After I use the dragon thing, I basically just bait the boss, and then I move out of the other faceless range to just bait the boss to give the kill to corn. Ryoma is basically able to help clear the faceless. It's actually kind of funny. He's an ally unit, and yet he gets the most kills on this map. Because he basically just swamps everything. During it, during every video, I will be giving a brief overview of certain units and their application in certain strategies. I switch to Rinka here since she's just naturally bulky. And I separate Corn so that way I'm able to have her take the kill on player phase next turn. I do want to clarify that I will be utilizing private quarter abuse, which is essentially during the downtime between certain maps, it's possible to enter the private quarters so that way you can build support points between certain units. This is incredibly helpful because it essentially allows Corrin to get friendship seals with certain units. For example, she can friendship seal with Scarlet to get Wyvern Lord. This is technically legit. It's kind of grindy. But you can do this in a legitimate sense, so I allow it. I also allow gem abuse and resource abuse, which is basically just me kind of utilizing the arena to get resources for forging as well as meals. Meals are going to be incredibly important in this run as they help with obtaining stat thresholds. Same with forges. The mess hall can allow you to get two stat boosts at once. I will be allowing that, even though it's really rigging, but it can also be done technically legit, so that helps too. Here in Chapter 5, it's a rather tricky map. Uh, it's incredibly RNG dependent on if Ryoma can basically hit Sumeragi enough times. 
if Tsuriyama doesn't, I basically have to reset the map, but it's not a big deal. So here, I kill the Worm Slayer Merc on player, fa on player phase with Corrin. Corrin is generally pretty bulky, so she can tank the mages just fine, but she can't take the Worm Slayer Mercs. And the plan here is to basically have Corrin Oko the mage on player phase, so that way Kaze can get in range of free mages and weaken them. Thankfully, Sakura has a personal which decreases damage from enemies, and that's incredibly important for Distract, since it essentially allows Kaze to take less damage and live, which is incredibly helpful. I just have Corrin at full HP just to be safe. Kaze dodges some attacks, but it doesn't really matter. Kaze can basically take two hits. Thanks to dual gauge, I can basically block a hit, which is also imperative in certain other strategies, since Birthright has a couple of maps where juggernauting is incredibly prevalent. So utilizing dual gauge is incredibly important. So on this turn, I essentially position my units... So that way I can have Kaze kill a mage. Korin kills also kills a mage, but is in range of the other two mercs. They don't have the worms. They don't have worm slayers. So they don't owe Ko Korin or two Ko Korin, I should say, thankfully. So I'm able to kill a mage as well as kill the mercs. I have Rinka also kill the mage. Just so that way she can get more EXP. I want to have shove by chapter 17. Which sounds like a lot of time, but is actually rather tight in regards to EXP management. So every bit of EXP helps. Shove is basically required for the chapter 2017 script and is also required for some other scripts. From other skips, I mean. Here, Rinka basically moves Kaze in range so that way Kaze can weaken the, the mage. Corrin is able to basically Oko both of these merch, which is thankful. And Azura is essentially able to move in range. Thanks to Sakura's personal, Azura does not get Oko'd by a mage. So the important thing here is getting re Corrin into range. A actually, Ryoma needs to die in order for Corrin to get enough movement to attack in front. So I essentially just move Corrin down and then have Azura come down to sing him. And then just to kill Sumeragi on player phase, I also heal Azura, which is thankful. But the mage goes for Kaze, which is nice. Here, I essentially just kill the three remaining mages on player phase. Corrin takes a kill. Uh, Sakura uses transfer to switch the Rinka to also get another kill, which is thankful. And then Kaze kills the remaining one on player phase. Here, I switch Corrin's Boon to Strength and Bane to Fragile, which is plus Strength minus Defense. It allows her to essentially maximize the amount of Strength that she gives on Parap. I also make her Talent Class Cav, so that way she's able to give Ryoma instant access to Paladin. I, thankfully, I don't need Wyvern because of the fact that Corrin can get it from Scarlet. Here, it's also rather simple. I essentially just weaken. I essentially just weaken a fighter, so that way Kaze, so that way Rinka can get the kill. Kaze or Rinka could get the kill, but I just prefer to give it to Rinka because Rinka getting more EXP to get to level ten is more imperative than Kaze getting EXP when he doesn't even need to promote. Here, I also just have Corin pair up with Hinoka. 
so that way she's able to ferry Corrin to kill Leo. Takumi is able to basically take a pot shot at Leo, and then Corrin is able to essentially take the kill thanks to Hinoka's personal rallying cry, which gives plus two strength to adjacent allies. I'm essentially able to pair Corrin to Ryoma, and then with rallying cry, I'm able to run around KO Xander with Ryoma without having to utilize any crits. So this is the end of the prologue to chapter six section. This is frankly the easiest and least entertaining section. However, we shall resume with chapter seven, which I will also be releasing the chapter seven and eight videos on the same day because it's essentially Moogle Boss's strat and I want to start the next day with my own original strats.